Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I make gumbo. Um, this is going to be a chicken and sausage gumbo. You can also do seafood, but this is how I make mine. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is chop up some onion. And I think typically I only use one onion, but the ones they had in the store were a little bit smaller than what I normally pick. So I just went ahead and got two. Um, you can use whichever kind of onion you like. I prefer the white ones, so that's what I'm using. I think most people would probably use a yellow one, but I just personally like the flavor of the white ones best. make sure we get all that peeling away. And I also like to take off the outer layer because sometimes I feel like it's a little more tough and even when I'm chopping it up it starts to pull away and it just doesn't cut as easily as the inner sides so I just go ahead and take that outer layer off too. Okay, so when I'm cutting this up, I kind of cut it in a really strange way. Um, normally, I would cut the onion in half the other way and leave the ends more intact than that. But um, basically what I'm going to do with this is put it in a food processor. So I'm just cutting it up. It's not uniform the way I'm cutting it, um, but that's okay because it's just going into the processor. Normally I would be a lot more meticulous with the way that I'm cutting it, so. And I'm sorry about the sniffling, but I think those onions were affecting my nose. The really strange thing about chopping onions is most people tend to have their eyes water or, you know, start to cry, but for some reason, and I think it's because I wear contacts, my eyes never bother me when I cut onions, and this one was an extremely fresh onion, so definitely if I didn't normally get bothered by it. Um, this one somehow affected my nose, I don't know, so. I'm not sure if it has to do with my contacts or not, but that's just what I tell myself, that they form like a protective barrier on my eyeball, so the onions, they never bother me, I never cry when I chop onions. I'm just chopping up the second onion, and I promise I am much better with the knife than what it looks like. I'm not really sure what was going on there. <laughs> I think that's kind of what I remembered. I was just doing a food processor, so I did edit that part out because no one wants to hear a food processor, and everyone knows what it does, so. There's all of my onions that are chopped up, and what I'm basically going to do is just put those into a bowl and um, run them through the food processor before I put them in my gumbo.
The next step is going to be cleaning your chicken. And I figured you guys wouldn't want to see it, so this is what it looks like when it's done. Okay, make sure you wash those hands after dealing with the chicken. Because you don't want any germs or anything like that, so make sure you wash them with soap and warm water. Get everything out from under your nails, any germs you might have. And we're good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, put some vegetable oil in my pot. I said like maybe a fourth of a cup in my recipe, but I forgot to measure it, so I just poured some in there. And then I'm turning my oven, my stove on to probably like medium high heat. Okay, so once it's hot, I'm going to go ahead and add the onions in. And it's hot again. There we go. Okay, so adding the onions in, and the second thing I'm gonna add in is celery. And I just got a whole stalk of celery a long time ago, and processed it up, and then um, put it in the freezer. So I always have celery available. So I'm just breaking off a few pieces of that and putting that in there. And we're gonna cook that down as our base. Also, into that, we are going to add our roux mix, and I use a jar roux. I know a lot of people make it from scratch, but this is the one I use, Savoy's, and make sure it's the dark one. So, for a typical gumbo, I would add about half of the jar of that, but since I had a lot of people coming over, I went ahead and added about three-fourths of the jar to it. And... If you don't know what roux is, it's kind of just a mixture of flour and water, but this one is commercially made, so um, it looks like chocolate, but it doesn't taste anything like chocolate. So I'm just putting that down into the pan, and, and I'm going to saute that up. So. So you're just going to stir that up, mix it in with the onions and the celery, and start to melt everything down. As you can see, the roux is really thick looking and kind of in a solid form. And what we're doing right now is melting that down until it gets almost to a liquid form. This is a step that you want to be really careful with, that you don't burn your roux, because if you burn it, it's going to be really gross, and you can't go back from that, so, um, I probably keep turning the temperature down because I have one spot in my pot that always sticks, so I always get worried it's going to burn, but just keep stirring it and see how I'm kind of separating it there so that way the roux can start to cook through. Because you don't really want it to be raw. Um, and that's what gives it all the flavor. The, the more you cook it and the darker your roux gets, the more flavorful and um, dark your gumbo is going to be. So. I'm just mixing all that until I'm melting with that celery. As you can see, it started to thin out and it's getting, you know, a little bit more like cooked through. So I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for 15 minutes to cook this so that way it gets as dark as possible, but um, I was kind of a baby and chickened out after about 6 minutes and this is going to be the next step. I wish I would cook it longer, but I always get so worried that I'm going to burn it. So 
The next thing we're going to do is add in three boxes. I think it's supposed to be chicken stock. Chicken broth. Okay, that's the right thing. I thought I bought the wrong one. Same thing. We're really great. So, um, because I was trying to make my gumbo a little bit bigger, I used three-fourths of a cup, I mean, three-fourths of the jar of roux, and I'm using three boxes of stock. Normally, I would use half a jar and two boxes, but... So, we're just going to add that in there, and however long you cooked your roux for is going to determine how dark your gumbo is going to be, so... You'll see that in a minute. I usually try to get the low-sodium chicken broth, but... Um, Sometimes it's a little more expensive, but it's just they have so much sodium in it. And I know the roux already does and everything else, so I just try to not put as much of the sodium from the broth as I can. Okay, so that's our chicken broth. And basically what I'm going to do is turn the heat up on that and I'm going to just stir it until all of that roux melts and it comes to a boil. So I've sped this up for us. You can watch it dissolve, but it doesn't take 20 minutes like it does in real life. So as you can see, it's getting darker and darker because that roux is starting to melt into it. And this part takes a long time, but you have to stir it constantly, otherwise it will kind of um, get burnt at the bottom of your pot, and again, you can't fix that. So, um, while it's dissolving and you have the really high heat on it, you don't want any of the roux just sort of sitting on the bottom of the pot, so just keep stirring and stirring and... Um, scraping everything down, and then I'm turning it up, I think, and then I'm done. Okay. Yeah, so, just scraping the bottom of the pot the whole time, making sure you have no spots. I know, um, there is a spot on my pot that things tend to stick to, so I always try to make sure I go over that spot really well. It's right there. As you can see, I kind of tend to favor that what's on your right side, my left, because I know that there is one little thing right there, so I make sure you're scraping the sides of the pot so it's not sticking on the sides either, and I'm just, I'll scoop it up occasionally just to look and see how dissolved it is. If you can still see chunks in it, then you need to keep stirring it. This is actually only the third time I've ever made gumbo in my life because I would try to talk my mom into teaching me and since there's not really a recipe um, that you can follow, it's kind of you have to learn by doing. So she finally let me go over there and help her make it a couple of times so that I could learn. I just get so scared when I do it on my own to burn that roux. So. My gumbo's not quite as good as hers yet, but I'm working on it. And we're still stirring. It's starting to smoke, so it must be boiling or at least close to it. I think it's pretty much dissolved at this point. It looks like it's kind of a dark color there. So I transferred it into a big giant pot because I knew by adding an extra box of chicken stock it was going to be a lot bigger. So I got a bigger pot so it wouldn't overflow when I put the chicken in. I think that's our next step. Yep, okay. So we're adding the chicken in. 
now that our roux is completely dissolved into the broth. And I normally do um, two packs of bone-in skin-on chicken breasts, and I just clean those and uh, take the skin off and that rib meat part off. But um, the store only had one pack, so I ended up getting chicken thighs as well, which make the gumbo a little bit um, more greasy, but it still is, it gives it a good flavor. And that's why you want the chicken with the bones in, because it gives it the best flavor. Okay, so we've put the chicken in, and we're just going to turn it up and bring the gumbo back to a boil. And we are smoking here, so it must be close to ready to boil. And I just like to stir it every now and then, just to check it and make sure that it isn't sticking to the bottom. Because you just don't know, so. And the next thing we're going to do, now that it's boiling, is we're going to go ahead and add our seasonings. This is a chicken base from McCormick, and normally I would add a heaping tablespoon, but since I tried to make it a little bit bigger, I added kind of a giant tablespoon and a little extra. And this just gives it a little bit of extra chicken flavor to it. Um, I'm not really sure what that stuff is. I assume you could substitute with maybe like a bouillon cube or something, but that's just what I use and it dissolves right into it. Then we're going to add some Slap Your Mama in hot. And this stuff is really, really spicy, so um, I'm going to add a bunch of it because I like my gumbo super hot. Then we have to add Tony Sachery's, of course. And what I have is the salt-free version, which I absolutely hate. Okay, red pepper also going in. So I like my gumbo to be super spicy. You can make it however you like, but I like it to be super hot. So, um, but yeah, the Tony Sachery's, if you ever have a chance to get it, it's wonderful, but you need to get the one in the green container because... The white one, although it's salt free and probably, I guess, has less sodium, it is terrible. It's so powdery, oh and I'm adding about a cup of water there, um, that as soon as you start to shake it on anything, it gets in your nose and your throat and you just start coughing and sneezing. So take a word from me and don't buy that one. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I think, is bring this back to a boil. And we're going to chop up our sausage now. Um, the sausage that I have is a jalapeno sausage, just from a local sausage place. Um, and this one has the jalapenos built into it, as you can see right there. It has little pieces of it, um, because I like it spicy again. So you can use any kind of sausage that you like. I know a lot of times in recipes for gumbo, they call for andouille sausage, which I personally don't really care for. Um, oh my gosh, there's Daisy licking her lips because I, she can smell the sausage. That is so funny. Um, so, and you can use whatever kind of sausage you like. I think this one is, if I had to guess, I would say pork. Either pork or beef, or a combination. I'm not really sure. I always cut the ends off, because I don't like them. I don't know why, but they're like freaking out, so. So yeah, so I'm just slicing it pretty thin, so it goes a little bit further. Um, you don't really want to put the sausage in as soon as you put the chicken in, because the sausage doesn't need nearly as long to cook as the chicken does. So, um, you just kind of throw that in at the last minute and let it simmer. But you can customize your gumbo any way that you like. I know um, 
a lot of people will put eggs in their gumbo, which I actually did this time. I've never done that before, but my boyfriend loves eggs in his gumbo. So I was already boiling the eggs for potato salad, so I just added a few extra and um, basically I just boiled them, peeled them, and then just stuck them in the gumbo. So I don't really care either way if there's eggs in it or not. If there is, I don't really eat them, but it doesn't do anything to the flavor of it, so I just thought I would add extras in, so. It's really funny because I love to have, like, sausage on a bun with barbecue, but I do not like, my sausage is really slimy, so, um, I don't like sausage and chicken and sausage gumbo. I just like the flavor that it gives to the gumbo, but, um, so I usually, when I serve myself, try to not put sausage in there, or if I do, just like one or two pieces, so, it's really strange because I generally like sausage otherwise, but for some reason, maybe because it cooks longer, I don't know. It's like a lot of sausage. So the next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and add that into our gumbo. And I'm just going to drop it in and end up splashing myself with boiling hot gumbo, which felt really nice. And dropping sausage all over the stove. I really think my dropping in plan went very well. So all we're going to do now is stir that sausage in and turn the gumbo down to like a low. So on my stove I put it on like number two and then cover it and just let it go until you're ready to eat. So to serve you want a bowl of white rice. And then you're just going to put your gumbo on top. And I like to go in and shred up my chicken for everybody ahead of time, so you just have to serve it. And there's not, like, bones or anything in it, so. And there's some sausage. And there we go. And you can serve that with potato salad on the side if you like, which I have here. Some people put their potato salad in the gumbo, but that's it. So I hope you enjoy, and thanks for watching.